In this video, we are going to talk about the taxonomic keys in which we will use the taxonomic characteristics of root flies that belong to order Diptera. Taxonomic keys are basically scientific and logical arrangement of the taxonomic characteristics of any group of organisms that is helpful in the identification. So in this video, we are going to use the taxonomic characteristics of fruit flies. Fruit flies belong to order Diptera. The members of order Diptera have two pairs of wings in which the four wings are membranous whereas the hind wings are reduced to knob-like structure. Taxonomic characteristics of fruit flies. So first of all, the morphology of wings acts as a taxonomic character for fruit flies. So here in this figure, you can see the wing morphology of different species of fruit flies that belong to the genus Bactrocera. So the figure A indicates the wing morphology of Bactrocera bogorensis. And in the same way, Bactrocera cordata, Silifera, Bactrocera correcta, Bactrocera cucurbite, Bactrocera digressa, and all of these species. Next taxonomic character is abdomen color patterns. So in this figure, the uh, abdomen color patterns of different species of uh, fruit flies belonging to genus Bactrocera and Dacus have been shown. So uh, Bactrocera bogorensis, Bactrocera cordata, Silifera correcta, Bactrocera tau, and uh, the Dacus genus uh, consists of the species Dacus longicornis and Dacus ciliatus. Next is uh, we had eight specimens of fruit flies and on the basis of these characteristics we have identified these specimens. The specimen A had wings mostly high line, coastal band that was epically dilated and scurellum consisting of one pair of bristles. We identified this specimen as Bactrocera cucurbite. Specimen B consisted of wings that were mostly high line, coastal band, epically dilated whereas the scutellum consisted of two pairs of bristles and we identified this specimen as Bactrocera tau. Specimen C consisted of wings that were mostly hyaline, coastal band that was not apically dilated, thorax with median yellow stripe. This specimen was identified as Bactrocera diversa. Specimen D consisted of wings that were mostly hyaline, coastal band that was not dilated apically and thorax that consisted of um, uh, that uh, did not consist of without any median yellow stripe. So this specimen was identified as Bactrocera dorsalis. Specimen E consisted of wings that were mostly opaque, wings with stripes and scutellum with five black spots. This specimen was identified as Carpomaya vesuviana. Specimen F consisted of wings that were mostly opaque, wings that consisted of stripes and scutellum with four black spots. This specimen was identified as Carpomaya zizifi. Specimen G consisted of wings that were mostly opaque, wings that were reticulate, and the posterior margin of wings consisted of three hyaline spots. This was identified as Tephracura xanthotrica. Specimen H consisted of wings that were mostly opaque, wings that were reticulate, and the posterior margin of wings consisted of five hyaline spots. This was identified as Pethulina acroleusa. Next, how to make a taxonomic key? Next, uh, uh, in this video, we will discuss the taxonomic key that is a simple non-bracketed key. Dichotomous as the name indicate dichot. So here we will arrange the uh, taxonomic characteristics in the form of pairs or couplets that are composed of alternatives. So in this block, you can see that we have arranged the specimens or taxonomic characteristics in the form of groups. So first group consists of uh, wings that are mostly highline, whereas group B consists of wings that have uh, that are mostly opaque. So in this way, we will arrange these characteristics in the form of couplets or pairs. Wing morphology on the basis of wing morphology, we have grouped these uh, characteristics or specimens. This is a forward run key. Uh, a forward run key why do we say that it is a forward run key because uh, with successive pairs we are moving to from one characteristic to the other and in this way we will be able to identify the specimens it can also be run backward but it may cause inconvenience so the grouping of specimens uh, the specimens that are uh, in group a consist of wings that are mostly highlight 
and the specimens in wing, uh, group B consist of wings that are mostly opaque. Next, the further subdivision in uh, the group A is on the basis of coastal band. Coastal band that is apically dilated and coastal band that is not apically dilated. Okay, so further subdivision in the specimens that have coastal band apically dilated is on the basis of scutellum that consists of one pair of bristles or two pairs of bristles. So next, the specimens that have uh, highline, wings mostly highline and uh, coastal band that is not dilated apically. Further subdivision in the, upon the basis of thorax. Thorax with median yellow stripe or thorax without median yellow stripe. Okay, so moving towards the group B, group uh, the wings of group B are mostly highline, oh, sorry, opaque. And uh, further subdivision is upon the basis of wings with stripes or wings reticulate. So division uh, of uh, the specimens that have wings with stripe next uh, character that is used for identification or making taxonomic key that is scutellum scutellum with five black spots or scutellum with four black spots next the specimens that have wings mostly opaque wings that are reticulate the further these are further divided on the basis of uh, the posterior margin of wings that may consist of three highline spots or five highline spots so in this way we have to first group the taxonomic characteristics upon the basis of which we are going to make the taxonomic key so now we are going to prepare a taxonomic key based on the taxonomic characteristics that we have arranged in the form of group a and group b the first character that is wings um, wings morphology first is wings mostly highline the members of group a have wings that are mostly highline and wings mostly opaque so wing morphology uh, on the basis of wing morphology we have arranged this alternative characteristics in the form of a couplet next character that is coastal band dilated apically next is coastal band not dilated apically this is the subdivision in group A on the basis of the coastal band morphology. Next is cutellar bristle one pair. And this is identified as Bactrocera cucurbite. So here uh, colors are also used for your convenience. Whereas uh, we have also used numbers. Mainly numbers are used and it is also known as a non-bracketed key because we are not using any brackets. So at number one you can see wings mostly highline wings mostly highline and next at the end of this uh, character we have written the number two no it means that from this character you will move towards the number two character that is the coastal band dilated apically this number three indicates after this you will move towards the number three that is skewtaler bristle one pair and uh, you will identify this specimen that consists of wings uh, mostly highline coastal band apically dilated and scutellar bristle one pair as Bactrocera cucurbite. Okay. So now next character that is scutellar bristle two pairs. The specimen that has wings that are highline coastal bands apically dilated and two pairs of scutellar bristles is identified as Bactrocera tau. Next moving towards four you can see here the uh, that uh, these uh, specimens they have wings mostly highline wings mostly highline next move towards two that is coastal band dilated apically no you will not move towards this because at number four uh, that is coastal band not dilated apically now moving towards the four you will not move towards the three because this four number indicates that uh, during running the key you will <coughs> uh, pair this character with four that is thorax with median yellow stripe and then you will identify the specimen with wings mostly highline coastal band not dilated apically and thorax with median yellow stripe as Bactrocera diversa next is thorax without median yellow stripe that will be identified as Bactrocera diver uh, dorsalis so uh, next character that will be used is wings with stripes so now here you can see that um, the characteristics that we have mentioned in group A have been completely covered. So next we are moving towards the group B. Uh, 
so upon the basis of wing morphology we have arranged it in the form of couplet that is wings mostly opaque wings mostly opaque you will move towards the group uh, the number five that is wings with stripes so after this wings mostly opaque this number five indicates that character mentioned at the number five will be the next uh, character that will be used for identification of that particular species so wings with stripes next move towards the number six that is wings reticulate so this is basically the pair or couplet upon the basis of which the group b is further subdivided wings with stripe and wings reticulate so next wings with stripes move towards six that is cutellum with five black spots you will identify the species consisting of wings mostly opaque wings with stripes next move towards the six that is scutellum with black spots as carpumaya visubiana next is scutellum with four black spots if you have a specimen that is uh, consisting of wings mostly opaque wings with stripes and scutellum consisting of four black spots then you will identify it as carpumaya zizifi next is wings reticulate you have a specimen that has wings opaque wings reticulate and the posterior margin of wings with three highline spot this specimen will be identified as tephrocura xanthotrica and if the posterior margin of wings have five highline spots then it will be identified as pathulina acroliosa so this is how you can prepare a taxonomic key and you can use a taxonomic key for identification purposes